The rules are simple. Build a functional computer or you will be eaten. Welcome back to Computer Engineer Plays. My name is Jared and I'm a real computer engineer. And today we're going to be looking at Turing Complete. In this game, you do everything from the digital logic design up through assembly programming language. This game is in early access. I'm sure there's going to be some you know, rough edges, but I think the core concept of this game is really cool. Let's get right into it. Congratulations, you have been abducted. We are testing you. The rules are simple. Build a functional computer or you will be eaten. Good luck. Huh, I did not realize that the stakes were so high. <laughs> Let's uh, give this a shot. A signal flows from the input to the output. In the upper left corner, under input, there is a green icon. Click it to turn the input component off. Notice that the output is turned off. This is because the signal stopped flowing from the input component. Okay, so it goes in from the input, flows through the wire to the output. Pretty straightforward. We are very impressed with how well you com completed the last test. We've decided you are probably not a plant. Okay, that's good. Not a plant. In this level, the challenge is to figure out how the NAND component works. Be sure to figure it out before you complete this level or you will get stuck on the next level. All right, so this is looking pretty familiar to me. We have input one and input two here. So, okay, I can toggle up in here and you can see that it'll toggle here as well. Uh, so I can toggle input one and input two, and it goes to the output here. So if I toggle them both, wait, why did it just shift? Anyways, the way that a NAND gate works is that you kind of have to know what an AND gate is first. When you have two inputs like this, if you were, if this was say just AND, like an AND gate, if both of the inputs were activated or uh, on, Set in, in binary, this would be set to a one instead of a zero. Then the output would be also one, but both of them would have had to be activated in order for the output to be on. But because this is a NAND gate, it basically is the inverse logic of a AND gate. So now if both of them if both of the inputs are toggled on then the nand gate will output an uh, a zero or it will not pass the signal through so in this case if we have uh, either of these inputs on or neither of them on we get output flowing but if we were to have both of them turned on we don't get any output so what does the NAND gate do is the question down here. So I have to, I guess, it's like completing a truth table. So I have to just say what what happens when you talk about these different things. So if both inputs are low, or I'll say red and green for now, I suppose. If both inputs are red, the output will be green. If either one of them is red, the output will be green as well. But if both are green, then the output is red. So let's go ahead and check that. And that's correct. I have unlocked the NAND gate. With this component, you can build everything else in your computer. So I actually really like how they're doing this here. When you learn digital logic design in college, uh, a lot of times you'll start with the simpler logic gates like an AND gate or an OR gate, which are, are more simple. But in real life, a NAND gate is the cheapest to manufacture. NAND gates are really what is used in almost every digital logic circuit that's out there. And turns out you can make the other logic gates using only a NAND gate. So I think it's cool that in this game they also start, they start with a NAND gate because in real life that is really the building block of everything. So, all right, let's keep moving on. Unlock the NAND gate. Okay, onwards. Now that you've unlocked the NAND gate, it's time for you to build a circuit. Last level, you made the table that described the circuit. In this table, you build the circuit that matches the table. Uh, using NAND gates, build the NOT gate. So using the NAND gate, build a NOT gate. So here's the truth table. Okay. So how does this work? Next, run. 
reset, multi select. Oh, is this wires? Okay, cool. And then NAND is up here. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. We are trying to create a NOT gate using just NAND gates. The truth table for a NOT gate is when the it just inverts whatever the, your input is. If your input is a one, then your output is a zero, vice versa. If your input is a zero, your output is a one. So all we need to do is figure out a way to use NAND gates in order to create an OR gate. So uh, this should be actually pretty easy, I think. So watch what happens if we draw from here to the first input of the NAND and the second input in the NAND. Let's think about what happens. If we were to toggle the input, uh, when when it's off, uh, I'm going to say when, when it's red, that means a low input. When it's green, that's a high input. So if both of the inputs are low, the output is going to be high. But if I were to toggle this, then now both of the inputs are high and the output is low. So that's inverting the signal. So this should be everything we need. So if we go ahead and run this, there we go. We got the NOT gate using only a NAND gate to create it. So now we've unlocked the NOT gate. So I think it's just going to give us a NOT gate as a basic building block. Oh, hold on. Level map colors, basic logic, arithmetic, and memory, CPU architecture, working computer, programming, CPU architecture 2, functions, assembly challenges. There's a lot in this game. All right, so we're going all the way up to assembly challenges. I'm really excited. Let's do a couple more levels here. It looks like I can choose either of these three. So let's just go left to right. Right now, the elephant is dominating all the other test subjects from Earth. Adjusting for brain size, you are also doing well. All right, I'm not doing too bad. Create the circuit that matches the table. Tip double click on a component to move it together with connected wires. Okay, that's, that's nice. So we have two inputs here that we get to toggle and we're trying to get this output. So I think if we just do, it looks like a, looks like an AND, this is just an AND gate actually. So if we look at the logic that we want, um, our output is low for any combination other than when both inputs are high. So if both inputs are high, then the output is high. Otherwise it's low. So that's just a classic AND gate. And we get an AND gate by inverting a NAND. So let's just go ahead and connect our outputs here. Then we connect our NAND to a NOT gate, which is going to invert it. And let's com connect that out to our output. So we can test it. We can see that uh, we have to toggle both of the inputs in order for the output to be uh, high. So let's go ahead and run. And there we go. We solved it and it unlocked the AND gate for us. All right. Most creatures on Earth are aggressive and cannot focus. To succeed, you must learn to think logically while not destroying things. All right, well, man, this guy kind of looks like Squidward, I guess. Mr. Squidward cousin. I will try not to destroy things. Create the circuit that matches the table. Okay, so for this level, it wants me to get a high output when both inputs are negative, but if any of the inputs are I, then we want the output to be low. Okay, so it looks like this level is wanting us to make a NOR gate. And so the logic for a NOR gate here is when either of the inputs are high, then the output will be low. The output will only be high if both of the inputs are low. So this is going to be the inverse of an OR gate. Basically, think of an AND gate, except both of the inputs are negated. So if we were to do a take both of the inputs, flip them, pass them into a NAND, and then invert the output of the NAND, I think that will get us there. Yep, that got it. So that's a NOR gate. So we're, it looks like it's just having us learn how to build up the basic logic gates that we'll use to do more advanced circuits. 
which is pretty cool. Alright, you should be happy you get to participate in our glorious tests. You get a chance to communicate with very advanced people from the galactic civilization. Alright, whatever, dude. Create the circuit that matches the table. Okay. Okay, what do we have here? We have when both are low, then the output is low. But if either is green, then the output is green. Okay, so this is a normal OR gate. That should be pretty straightforward. So let's think about the logic for a NAND. In the logic for a NAND, if either of the inputs were low, then the output was high. So we kind of want that except the inverse uh, inputs. Like if both of these inputs were, were high, we would want the output to be high as well. So what if we just took this and inverted the inputs? What do we get here? All right, that works. That one's pretty simple. So there is our OR gate. All right, so now it's probably going to have us uh, use all three of those. Create a circuit that is always high. Interesting. I like the abstract objectives that it gives us here. So it needs to always be high. Okay, so this should be pretty straightforward. What, what it wants is if the input is red or if it's green, we want it to be green. Now, of course, our input is only ever going to be one or the other. So if we were to use an OR gate here, uh, we could also use a NOT gate and feed both of these. So if I take the input pass it to the OR gate, and then I invert the input and also pass that to the OR gate, that means that no matter how I toggle this, one of the inputs to the OR gate will be high. So that should always, no matter what I select for the input, whether it's high or low, our output is always going to be high. So that one's pretty straightforward. This level unlocks your first manual page. This one is important. Make sure you understand it. Interesting. I didn't know there was a manual. I wonder how I get to the manual. Computer concepts. De Morgan's laws. Oh, I remember this. The truth table of the four fundamental gates are symmetrical. You can convert between them by inverting the input, vertical arrows, or inverting the output, horizontal arrows, as indicated by the graphic below. You can get from any basic gate to any other. At most, you have to not both inputs and outputs. You can go between OR slash NOR by inverting output. The same goes for AND and NAND. NOR means not OR and NAND means not AND. Yep, pretty straightforward. And you'll, yeah, you'll notice the shape matches. So for the NAND gates, you get this kind of a dome sort of shape, whereas for the OR, you get this more curved sort of concave shape. The dot at the end uh, usually means that the output is negated. So you'll notice the tiny dot there for the NOR gate and for the NAND gate. That means that it's negated. So it'll be the like the inverse of what this symbol represents. So if this dome symbol, like the one that looks like the letter D, represents an AND gate, uh, the, the D dome shape with a dot would be a NAND. So, all right, cool, De Morgan's Laws. I learned that in college. Unlocks, on, always on, and off, always off. Okay, so we get some, like, uh, some just signal values that we get to input here, and we get a manual entry. As you know, these tests culminate in building a functional computer. Species that are capable of finishing are considered sentient by law. This is the main reason we don't eat you afterwards. Alright, so I guess in their society, you are not sentient unless you can build a computer. So, we're going to keep uh, building this computer. I do not want to get eaten. Output a high signal on the second tick only. Only if input 1 is high and input 2 is low do we want the output to be high. Let's think about what we want. 
we want an AND gate. So we got to think about what are the inputs to the AND gate that give us the desired output to be high. So we want the input to be input one, which is the one on top to be high. And we want input two to be not high. So if both of these were selected here, uh, if both of these were high, then the output of this would be negative. If, however, the lower input is low, or input two is low, and input one is high, then our output is high as well. And then for any other combination, yeah, I think this does it. Let's try that. Yep. Okay, cool. Last level you built a circle that was high when we were at the second tick. This level build a circuit that is high when we are at the second or third tick. This is known as an XOR gate. This level is difficult, so don't be discouraged if you don't get the answer right away. All right, so we are building an exclusive OR gate, XOR. The logic of this means that you have to have one or the other, but not both. Let's start with the OR gate. So if we were to just hook this up to an OR gate and run our logic here, the problem is that when both of these are high, then our output is high, but we want the output to be low in this instance. So one way that we could get around this is consider a, if we were to connect these up to an AND gate as well, right? So if these are both ANDed, we could uh, invert this and put this through another AND. So let's actually route this like this. Okay, so now what is what's this doing? So if both of these are uh, high, this is just an, a normal OR gate logic, right? Which gives us um, the OR condition that we need. But the problem is this last, this last condition where both inputs are high. We want this output to be negative. So we're just building a little circuit to account for that. So now if both of these are high, that will activate the AND gate, but then we can invert that because we set the output low when this is when when both of these inputs are high. You know what we could do actually? Instead of of doing an AND in a NOT gate, let's just do a NAND gate. That'll be simple, right? That's the whole point of it. So now watch this. If both of the inputs are low, uh, nothing gets past this AND gate, so our output is low. If one input is high, our output is high. If the other one is high, our output is high. But if both are high, then our output is low. So this is an XOR gate right here, exclusive OR. And there we go, we unlock the XOR gate. Well, I think that's probably gonna be good for this first look. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, it's kind of fun. It takes me back to the college days. I remember learning all of this stuff in my classes, but this is pure digital logic design. This is every computer starts out with these ones and zeros with these logic gates. So uh, next time we will finish up the basic logic section and get into arithmetic and memory. I'm excited for that. So thanks for tagging along. See you next time.